couldn't make my mind up at first. It was such a shock. Then I settled for cornflakes. Well, I didn't think there was much you could do wrong with them. <laughs> <laughs> a nice thought, though, wasn't it? Breakfast in bed. Mm. And with a telly. That was a lovely surprise. Thanks, lovey. Well, you can come up any time you like for a bit of peace and quiet. Watch whatever programme you want. And so can you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I never thought about? Oh. That? <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, love. Even though it got off to such a bad start. Oh, God, I feel so embarrassed. Half the clothes were out. Don't worry about it. But only Marie and Michelle there, Terry. Paul Collins and Annabelle. Harry Cross and Edna. <laughs> Ralph. <laughs> Teresa and Matty, <laughs> and half the swan. Oh, and a family called Loskovich. No, he'd had a false alarm. <laughs> then there was a taxi driver, oh, a doctor, oh. two nurses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then I sat on Annabelle's mince pies as well. Well, there you go. It's a nice to remember. <laughs> it's all your fault, talking about stars and shepherds. I honestly thought it was coming. <laughs> a lot of people asked about you at midnight, Mass. Oh, did they? What did you tell them? Well, I said you'd take that upon yourself to test the efficiency of the National Health Service baby unit <laughs> by just having a bit of a dummy run. <laughs> to go to Mass a bit later on. You stay where you are. You've only been home a couple of hours. What about dinner? Well, leave it to us. David made a good job of the cornflakes, didn't he? Sure, you can manage. No problem. What time did you leave the hospital? Well, I went to Mass when they said it was a false alarm. Then I went back later and stayed for a couple of hours. You must be shattered yourself. No, Christmas Day and all my prayers are still open. <laughs> all right, Mum. Yeah? You're thinking about our dad, aren't you? Yeah. Will he get a Christmas dinner? Yeah. He's gonna have exactly the same as us at exactly the same time. I've arranged it. Have you? Oh, yeah. We thought he might be home today as a surprise. <laughs> Look, Look Terry, you miss you. All right, all right. Let Terry sit down. All the best, Marie. Happy Christmas. Do you two want to look in the uh, top drawer of the sideboard, see if there's anything for you? We already have, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Michelle. I'm Terry. I'm Terry. We're going to marry Terry. Then he'll be Uncle Terry. All right, that'll do. Go upstairs and get dressed. Go on. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, thanks, Marie. Another one. We didn't know what to get for you. Under the circumstances. So we thought we'd uh, do the right and you'd be doing. That's lovely. <laughs> Thank you for being so understanding. Merry Christmas. Bye. What are you looking for? The television page. I kept it. Mr. Loskovich was very understanding about those mince pies. Well, I should think he was, all the money that was in them. I left it here, I'm sure. What are you so bothered about TV for? We'll be cooking shortly. Joint effort, remember? Just like to know what I'm missing, that's all. Oh, thank you for the walk. Meals on wheels must be paying. Yes, I think if I can survive the sabotage by the neighbours, I might just make a living at it. Oh, I've just remembered. What? I used some paper last night when I was packing the food. Television page, no doubt. I'm sorry. Oh, I'd better ring Loskovich and ask him to read it out to me. Pity I used disposable plates. Otherwise, he could have sent it back with them. I hate being without a paper. We should get a teletext television. Gordon says it's making newspapers obsolete. Nonsense. Technology may be leaping ahead, but you can't beat the printed word. 
pleasure of turning a page at your own speed. I mean, most of what's on telly is rubbish anyway. Why are you so keenly looking for the television babes, then? Well, I thought they might be making a special effort for Christmas. Hello? Oh, Lucy! Oh! Oh, where are you? Switzerland? You sound so close. Put them in there, where they keep all. Well, I don't know, do I? No, but you should know. If you'll pardon me for saying so, Dad, you're not shaping much better yourself. That's supposed to be stuffing, not cement. How do you mean? Well, the way you add mortar and mix in it. Use a bigger spoon, it'll be easier. I oh, wish Linda had come round for dinner. Ah, <laughs> why? You're missing the sun. No, she could have cooked it with our cags. <laughs> hey, don't call me that. And you shouldn't take us for granted either. It's only what you're supposed to be doing, cooking and that. Who says so? Is there some universal law that says women have to do the menial tasks? It's traditional. It's rubbish. Starting with Eve. She didn't cook the apple for Adam. No, she cooked his goose, giving it to him now. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't be encouraging them, Dad, in your position. Oh, what do my elbows in stuff with? As your capacity as a union official who should be trying to achieve equality for women. You might be right there, Queen. Can I just ask you a question? Yeah. Well, I'm doing this. And Damon's doing the spuds. What are you doing? I'm supervising. Oh, and well, I thought you were just standing around giving us orders. Yeah, well, it's the same thing. You know, there will be a time when you'll accept the female as an equal. And in some cases, a superior without question. Well, I've got no time for these women's livers. I think you should all be fucked behind bras. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep it cool, OK? You must have read that somewhere, Damon. You're just not clever enough to think about for yourself. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Peace on earth to all men. It must be the most miserable day in his life. He'd have been out there with them now if he'd been here. I'm thinking of moving up there. To Cumbria? At least then I could visit him at every opportunity. But he'll be out soon. It's hardly worth it. Selling up, you mean? No, just renting somewhere. I think he'd appreciate it if we were closer. It's not very practical, is it? I've got an awful feeling about him. Yeah, well, you're bound to feel depressed. It is a special day. It's not depression. It's not just that. I've got this feeling about him. There's something bad around him. There's a darkness. Don't talk like that, Marie. You frighten me. He won't be in there that long. It's not a feeling of death. Stop it. Terry, tell her to stop it. Don't, Marie. You're only going to upset yourself. But there's something, and I don't know what it is. And don't to go and see Mrs O'Rourke. She's bound to be a bit short after Christmas. She'll say anything to make a few bob. She has a gift. I know. Hello. Oh, hello, Betty, love. Yeah, thanks. Betty, the one that minds the kids. Do you want stuffing? Oh, of course I want stuffing. Well, don't say it like that. I'll just put it on your plate. You say it gave your heartburn. As long as there's no garlic in it. Don't talk stupid. They don't want garlic in stuffing. I bet they do in Spanish stuffing. And don't go mentioning Spain in Ralph front of Ralph. Oh, all right. Where is he, by the way? Don't to visit Grace at the cemetery. Uh, hope he doesn't come back all depressed. Well, he's not going to be doing a sand dance, is he? That's what us three are like. Wilson, Keppel and Betty. Why don't you put your new shirt on? Oh, in a minute. Do you like it? I love it. Morning, mate. Hello. Been getting presents, have you? Yeah. Hello, Ralph. Hello. Can you spare a minute? Oh, well, come on. Open them up. Let's see what's in them. Well, no. They're for you. Oh. Oh, thank you. Well, come on, woman. Give him his present. <laughs> oh, driving gloves. How did you know? You know what? I, I just thought they were gloves. Oh, Ralph, it's lovely. It must have cost a fortune. Oh, smashing, Ralph. Where did you get it? Oh, I have my contacts. I tell you what, mate, that's going to bring back some happy memories. Why did you ask about the gloves? Driving gloves. 
Well, I was saying to Harry last night, I'm thinking about buying a little runabout. And with your Kevin moving down south, it'll be ideal. So will the pen to write to him. Ralph. Our Kevin. You haven't told her, have you? I think somebody had better tell me. Wonder how much money that call cost Lucy. Dubois, more like. Hope she realizes how lucky she is. I'm sure she does. I didn't think she'd take to skiing, but she seems to be enjoying herself. Hmm. Well, let's not forget to enjoy ourselves. In our Brookside chalet. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's paid for. You never know, this might be our last Christmas here. Why do you say that? I oh, moved here when I was made redundant. Now I'm back in harness, it's logical we should go back over the water. Get a decent-sized place to live. Well, if this Christmas is anything to go by with Lucy in France and Gordon off gallivanting, we'd better start looking for a one-bedroom flat. <laughs> Very funny. But the difference is, we don't have to if we don't want to. Absolutely. Well, let's just bear it in mind, shall we? Freedom of choice that being in work brings. Marvellous, isn't it? Yes, it is. Ah, uh, it's the twins. Thought as much. Can't be much of a Christmas day for them. True. I wonder if George Jackson's wearing my best shirt for Christmas Day. <laughs> You'll get it back. <laughs> After six months in Walton Jail. Haverick, <laughs> they've moved him. Oh, I hope my shirt went with him. <laughs> that turkey smells good. Won't be long now. This is better than going to party, staying up all night and enjoying yourself, isn't it? Are you enjoying yourself? Of course, Sam, that's what I've just said. It wasn't for those flaming kids. Calm down, Harry. You'll do yourself a mischief getting all worked up. Go and play your own end of the clothes. Put your new shirt on now you're up. Oh, all right. Should I get it? No, you're a ghast. Oh, wait, Damon. What are you doing saving the taters and that? Salam malikum. We've been following this star, you see, Gail. All the best, you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this one? Oh, Barry. Oh, Mum. <laughs> oh, Barry. <laughs> you better get the fatter car for the oven, I think. <laughs> Where did you get it from? Teresa wanted a fair coat for Christmas, so I decided to get her a donkey jacket. Uh. It's not the best Christmas we've ever had. And it's not our fault. I'm going to do what Betty suggested. Free George Jackson? Yeah. The campaign? The best anybody's ever done. But it'll be out soon. What's it going to come out to, eh? The fire brigade won't have him back. He's going to be out of work and the next con. My George and he's done nothing. No. I want a free pardon for him. You'll only get yourself into bother. Since when has that stopped me when I've known I've been right? You'll have to be careful. Because of McArdle. If I can get to him, all the better. 
It was Bessie's lad suggested her. They're a right pair of egg cases. They're all right. I'm going to let everybody know that there's a lot of injustice in this country. And everybody in Liverpool's going to know that George Jackson's innocent. Well, it belongs to a mate of mine. He's a children's entertainer, you know. He uses it in the act. Count up to seven, you know. <laughs> what, your mate or the donkey? <laughs> <laughs> donkey, soft lad. Hey, hey, can we get him in and have a go? Oh, hey, oh no, we better not, Damon. It's uh, temper. I'll only do it for the semester, lad. Let me get over here, Chi. What, the shock of the donkey or last night's fiasco? Oh, both. Well, the sight of you three on the doorstep nearly started me <laughs> off again. Still, it was worth it to have him home. Ah, uh, how long are you home for? Four days to shut up, Damon. So it's going all right, is it, lad? Yeah, I'm enjoying it, lad. Are you eating properly? Of course I am, ma'am. Does anybody want a cup of tea? Yes, please. Come on, Dane. What? Yeah, I'm waiting for the Queen's speech here. Well, oh, if you are a Republican. Terry's over the road, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I'll go over and see him after I. Hello. Alan. Alan Partridge. Oh, oh, Merry Tom, Christmas, lad. Alan. Hey, Alan. Oh, all the very best to you as well, lad. Yeah, fine. No, not yet. We had a false alarm yesterday, so it must be due any day. <laughs> How's Samantha? Is she? <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> oh, yeah, any time. Look forward to it. All the best to you too, Al. See you, lad. Is she pregnant? Must be a lot of it about. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I dropped down there. It's not the time of year to be on your own. Depends who you're with. It's all right. Are you going to be seeing Celia while you're home? Eh, uh, no, I don't think so. Just stay with the family thing. Go over and see Terry after. Mm, I'd drink first if I was you. Yeah, you're probably right. Marie's not going to be in the best of moods today, is she? So, eh, uh, how's things with you? I'm still a uh, sport man, you are. They won the championship this year. Got away. They came forward in the two horse race last year. They'll be there. Liverpool's days are over. God, listen to him. Do you miss Liverpool? Yeah, I suppose I do. Well, some things, anyway. But you've got to move on sometime, haven't you? Mm. Like, well, like when you go to university. Will you take these in? Yeah. Hey, whoa. Cheers. You're looking well anyway, Cam. Hey, Andrew, you're going to have to watch this one. You've seen some women's living all there. Uh... How are you, Cam? Good for you. Our Kevin should be here soon. Oh, I couldn't eat anything just yet. I'm not surprised the food you had. Well, after all, it is Christmas and the turkey was free. He must have given loads of it away. Taxi's full. All backhanders, I bet. We didn't get any free gear on the railways, did we, Ralph? Nothing. Cheap travel. That was about all. We're going to need it now to visit our Kevin. Have you got over the shock now? Just about. I was waiting for the right time to tell you. I still think you'd forgotten. You had too much whiskey last night. Oh, I can take it. I can't wait to try these out in my new car. It'll be nice for you having a little car. Be nice for all three of us. I could run you down to Marlow in about four hours. Hey, we could stop off at Oxford on the way. Beautiful place, Oxford. Oh. Oh. Harold! Harold, what is it? Oh, God! Oh. Oh, what's the matter? Help oh. me. An ambulance! Oh. Get an ambulance! Oh, the nurses! The nurse. Oh, You really count up to seven, eh? You won't have to worry about a taxi if the donkey's still here, will you, kid? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's lovely, isn't he? You're supposed to be a woman of the world, and especially in your condition. What? That he happens to be a she. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? Well, it does if you're another donkey. <laughs> <laughs> Behave yourself. <laughs> What's that? That friend of Harry Cross's. Ever's the matter with him? Well, let's go and see. Oh. 
Glad to see you're up and about anyway, Ta. You shouldn't be up yet. I'm all right, Michelle. It's better if I'm up. Mum, guess what we found? Oh, not another dead bird. Better, and it's alive. Bring it in, Gaddy. God! Where did you get that from? Found it. Can we keep it, Mum? No, of course you can't. Somebody must have lost it. Oh, get it out for just to be on the carpet. Yeah, I'll take it. You what? Well, it must have got loose from our back garden. And Addy Cross is having an heart attack. I wanted to tell them. Is that what all the shouting's about? They want somebody who can do first aid. Pity Dad wasn't here. Don't move me. Come on, H, let's loosen your collar, lad, so you can breathe easier. How is he? Seems paralysed, just can't move. Granny, little George, that's very bad manners. Oh, this is where the party is, eh? Shh. I'm all right. Matter? You don't move me. Hey, what are we all playing? Dead man, he's having a heart attack. Oh, go away. Uh, has anyone phoned for an ambulance? Oh, I'll ring. Come on, H, let's slacken it out, lad. Don't move me, for God's sake. Hey, hang on a minute. What is it? Hey, Edna, is this a new shirt? Yes, but I don't think this is the time. The pin's sticking in him. He's pissing it in as he's going like that. Oh, that's right. I can see the head of it. There it is, there. Ah. <laughs> what are you all drinking? Oh, come on, let's have a party! <laughs> oh! Well, Bob, this is it! OK, hang on, don't worry, hang on! Oh. Mind that tub, you have to roll, look out! <laughs> Time. It is New Year's Day, Marie. 1985 or 1986. You've been in bed that long, you wouldn't know. Talk about the season's greetings. And what time did you get in last night? I don't know. Well, I didn't go to bed till after two, I know that. Well, it was a New Year's party. Could have phoned us up. We were sat here like two puddings. Thought your dad and Marge were calling round. Well, they left early, cos they were going out. I'm sorry, I didn't know. I didn't think that so. Yeah, well, you don't these days, do you? There's me and Betty working ourselves to the bone, trying to get George out of that godforsaken place. All you can think about is going out. Can't 
we have a rest from that, just for today? No, we can't. Is George having a rest from it in prison? Today might be a holiday for some people, but not for me. I want my husband home, Michelle. Hello? Anyone home? Hilda! Hello. Hello. Happy New Year. Oh, you too. You're not due back till the weekend. Is anything wrong? No, no, it's work. I got a call on New Year's Eve from the boss's secretary. Come back urgently was the command. Unfortunately, it means I miss Rosa's wedding. Oh, what a pity. Never mind looking on the positive side. If I'd stayed over there another five days, I think I'd have come back as fast as a pig. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> I'm just the same. We've done nothing but eat and drink. <laughs> I'll just put these okay. away. My God, that's rather large, isn't it, Annabelle? My first capital investment with the proceeds of my business. Delivered today. Today? Yes, I got it from the chap who supplies me with my frozen food. I made it a condition of the sale that he brought it round today. Cash on delivery. I say, though, it's a little bigger than I expected. No need to guess your New Year resolution, then? To make your business a success? Oh, yes. But my main one is to lose weight. <laughs> Keep fit. Snap. Really? Well, I think it goes hand in hand with keeping on top of your work. Anyway, that's my motivation. <laughs> Actually, um, I was thinking of going jogging. Yeah, some of the people I work with swear by it. But at my age, nonsense. Get up there and try it. Do you think I could jog? Well, just look around you when you're out. For most of them, it's too late. Don't you think I fit into that category? No, I certainly don't. Look, if you do it, I'll do it. I knew they were plotting something. What? Our Kevin and the other fella. If you mean Ralph, why don't you say Ralph? I'm sick of that name. It's a sad day for him having to take Grace's things to the old folks' home. I could have done that. Me and our Kevin. Well, why didn't you then? Because our Kevin wouldn't have it. I just stood there while they were packing it up. Then I had to make tea while they had their heads together, all nice and cosy-like. Harold Cross, what are you on about? I'm on about the conniving. That'll be him now. Flaming cuckoo oh, in the nest. Hello, Heather Love. Happy New Year, Heather. Oh, Happy New Year. Uh, go on through. Thank you. Happy New Year, Harry. If you say so, love. Well, I hope you'll accept this. It's a little present. I brought it all the way back from Ireland. Oh, that's lovely. Look, Harold. I'm looking. Oh, take no notice of him, love. He'll be as miserable this year as he was last year and every year before. Well, I won't stop. Oh, stay and have some tea with us, Heather. Never mind Grumpy there. There'll only be the two of us tonight. What? He's gone for a drink. I thought he'd gone to the old folks' home. You no, know, Kevin dropped him off at the railway club. They've got an all-day extension. He's gone with our Kevin. No, on his own. Well, that's a flaming cheek. Look, I, I really think I should be off. It's no bother, Heather. It's very kind of you, Edna, but I've got an awful lot to do. Bye-bye, Harry. Cheerio. Bye-bye, oh, uh, love. Bye-bye. And happy new year. Bye. What do you want to act like that for in front of Heather? Never mind about her. He, that fella, he comes here, eats us out of house normal over Christmas. Then goes out on his own for a drink without even asking me. Well, what he had to do today, the man deserves a drink. Does he? Does he now? We've acted like his unpaid servants for weeks. And now our son wishes him on us for good. What? As I said before, he's a cuckoo. A cuckoo in my flaming nest. Right. Shape yourselves, you two. And Michelle, get dressed. Come in, love. Oh, Tommy. All right. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy, happy New, New Year. Year. Some of us wouldn't be happy, whatever we've got. The twins all right? They don't even know I've gone. They're in the front room with our Jan's car racing things. <laughs> Perhaps he'll let the kids have a go today. <laughs> well. What do you think, eh? See what I mean? Looks much more official now, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Have you seen it, Michelle? Very good. I've got 
250 of these petition forms. She's a good girl, that Sandra. She got them run off at work while boss wasn't looking. 250, eh? Mm. Some's gone through. They're in all the shops on the estate, both parish clubs. And my old fella got in a dull hours last night. He says there's one in every pub in district. Well, we'll get this lot circulating round here, won't we, Michelle? Won't we? We've already done one petition. We've done one petition. Oh, that was just a local thing. Ooh, we want this one to grow. We want the whole of Merseyside to sign this. See what I mean? Then when it lands on the Home Secretary's doormat, he'll know exactly how people feel about George. No tea goes on this table till I know what's going on. Come on, woman, I'm starving. Maybe I'll get me full share with him out of it. Not till I know what's going on. He must have said something to get you in a mood like this. It was private. Was it about Ralph? I said it was private between me and Kevin. He's my son and all, Harold Cross. It was about your gambling. Oh. Now, can I have me tea? Well, what did he say about, you know? He said, I couldn't keep you out of trouble on my own. How oh, Kevin? He said that. You asked me. Well, what does he mean? He wants the other fella to stay. To keep an eye on you. Ralph? Our Kevin wants Ralph to stay. Oh, it's nice and easy for him, isn't it? He just ups and moves south. If he hadn't got Ralph Hardwick to come and mind us, perhaps he'd have had us put away. Oh, aren't you cold? I'm freezing. We have such a good time. What? What will they do? Patting them. I wish you'd stop going on about them. I went to a party with them, that's all. Pat was telling me last night you went to university. Could have done a lot more, but, well, he just enjoys doing what he wants. We enjoy ourselves. Do we? Oh, you don't have to go to a university to enjoy life, do you? It's not that. What's so special about them, him? My ma was sick for years. That's why I hardly went to school. I don't mean that, Terry. You said you just went to a party with them. It sounds like to me you wanted to. I'm just talking about how they live. All I ever get is problems. All that downstairs, free George. He's going to be out soon. What's the point? I knew getting beaten up. All we ever get is problems. Oh, and you? Thought you weren't back till the weekend. I was telling Annabelle, urgent business. Well, you're going in today. The new girl does as she's told for. <laughs> oh, well, better to be wanted. Now I'm back at work, I find holidays drag. Call in for a drink when you get home. Oh, thanks. I might just do that. Bye. Right. suit you. It's only a second-hand freezer. I really don't think you need to be in a mood like this. Don't you? For heaven's sake, it didn't cost that much. It cost a hundred pounds. Honestly, Anna. A hundred pounds for something that belongs in a scrapyard. It works perfectly. I just checked. Moreover, it's vital for my business. Vital. How can I be expected to cater properly if I don't have a decent stock of food? If I'd had a larger freezer earlier, I might have been able to cope with your embarrassment of turkeys. That may well be. But it's equally vital that my car is kept covered. As it is, I've, I've spent a king's ransom on a brand new garage, for which we haven't even got permission yet. A garage, not a frozen food store. You haven't got planning permission. 
going through. Well, what's the point when it seems to be for the sole purpose of protecting a useless extravagance? Really? Just hope you get a decent return on it when you grow tired of the business. Well, that's where you're wrong, Paul. I won't grow tired of it. This is what I want to do. I'm getting busier and busier. I'm opening a company account tomorrow. This is the way I want to go, whether you like it or not. Well, I just hope that you'll consult me in the future before filling your home with ridiculous machinery. Oh, yes, Paul, I'll consult you. I'll be very open about it. But if it's for the good of my business, my business with my money, I'll do what I think is right. Thanks, Rec. He's coming round on Thursday. Oh, sooner than that. Well, he's busy, you know, holidays and that. Well, we could have done with him here today, Marie. We need all publicity we can get, love. What about them leaflets? You know how I'm fixed. Yeah. I could ask our Michelle. Hey. I could start a collection. He could put jars in art pubs and that. See what I mean? I don't want to be begging, Betty. Who's going to be begging? Your husband's in jail, Marie. They won't give you anything the social. That's not begging, Marie. People will give, I'm telling you. You are not half good, Betty. We're going to clear his name, whatever it costs. All my money will be going on the visiting. Oh, dear God. All that way just for an hour. We'll clear his name. I've promised you. <laughs> it's no good getting like this. Hey. The time for crying's over, Marie. It's fighting now. Just fighting. Despite what you discovered about the office block in Birmingham, Heather, Cosgrove still want to go ahead with the bid for clerks. I thought my report put them wise. That block's one big liability. Yes, but it's more complicated than that. You know that Cosgrove's wanted to broaden their base on production. Mm -hmm. They're also mad keen to buy into clerks for the patent rights they hold. Well, we've been through all that. Or rather, Heather has. Are they that valuable? Clerks have got something new up their sleeve. And Cosgrove's are determined to get it. But apart from that, there's the customer list. They are worldwide. It'll give them much wider access into international markets, particularly Europe. They can tap all manner of grants from Brussels. We do know this, Joyce. I'm recapping. What I haven't told you about is Oakdens. They're contenders, too. They want clocks and in a hurry, by all accounts. I don't know them. Well, you don't have to. All that matters is that they want to bid, and quickly. So this takeover can't happen quickly enough for Cosgroves. Are they ignoring my report on that office block? It was good advice, Heather, and they're not ignoring it. They're just going into the deal with their eyes open. But, I mean, I've said it before. You couldn't give it away. They'll absorb it, liability or not. They thought it might be rich pickings, but no. They're prepared to live with it, though, for long-term gain. Look, the principle works both ways. You've discovered that office block wasn't worth its value on paper. Cosgroves are confident that the patents and so on, probably exploited, are worth far in excess of any value on paper. It's their decision, their risk. And they are the best qualified to make that decision. You did the job you were there to do. But they are not prepared to sit around while the world gets back to normal after Christmas. They want to move quickly and smoothly. No jitters with the suppliers, none with the customers, and certainly not a quiver on the stock market. I see. So let's carry on with the scrutiny. That is why we are all here this afternoon. Oakton's forcing it. Right. Who does what? I reckon we should put our heads together and write down everything that happened to George, right from the very first minute he met this gangster fella, get all the dates and times and everything, like a diary. See what I mean? Then we can give it to this Ricky Sexton. I don't know if I can remember all the dates and that. Oh, Michelle might remember. I don't. Well, you've got to, Marie. Then we can give it to this uh, reporter fella and he can make his own inquiries. Now, that's another thing. He doesn't know that George has been sent to Cumbria. 
No. Well, you see, we should make a fuss about that as well. It's not right, you know, Michelle. The journey that Maria's got to make just to visit her husband for an hour. He'll be out soon. What's the point of all this? Clearing his name, that's the point. Oh, yeah, he's going to be out. But what to, eh? All right, carry on then. But leave me out of it. Listen, madam, we're all three of us in this together. You, me and Teddy. Where is he, anyway? How should I know? You know Heather's workload just now, apart from Cosgroves, it is pretty heavy. So, um, I'd like you to step into the breach, as it were. Fine. Just the chance I've been looking for. Beware, Miss Havisham. Well, don't get carried away, Greg. This isn't promotion. From now on, you're Heather's leg man. I want you to take over all her smaller jobs and also do the leg work on this assignment. It will require a considerable amount of work in a short space of time, so you will be taking on a lot of responsibility. Suddenly I'm an important person. <laughs> I wouldn't exactly put it that way. But I want you to give Heather all the backup that she needs, and if she needs anything, I want you to drop everything, OK? Everything? Well, anything in the course of duty. Now get out before I find someone else to do the job. Thanks. Look, by the way, as it's New Year's Day, can I buy you both a drink? They'll be open soon. Thanks, Greg, but I won't have the time. Heather? And neither will Heather. I think we're going to have to postpone our celebrations until we've settled this takeover. Thanks anyway, Greg. See you tomorrow, then. Good night. Bye. Well, he won't be seeing you. Oh, no, not Birmingham again. No. I know it's not the done thing, but I thought you might appreciate working from home. So I've got the go-ahead to let you take the assets register for clerks away with you. It'll take some going through. And I thought you'd prefer to do it without phones ringing and um, other bothersome things. How long can I keep the register? Till Thursday afternoon at the latest. I'm afraid others are going to need it by then. Right, down to business. I take it that is for us, not someone else's dinner for tonight. It's for us. Thank you. The way my business is expanding, I think I might have to employ someone to help. It won't always be like this, taking over the house. I'm glad to hear it. There's no need to outline your future plans to me at this stage. But I want you to take an interest. I'm perfectly willing to be open about what I'm doing. Well, as we're both committed to being open about our business activities, you might like to be the first to know. Oh, what? I've picked the firm for the maintenance contract at the plant. Not David Davis. Hmm? Oh, no. Not after buttering me up with that lavish lunch. Excellent though the meal was. No, I've gone through the tenders, and remarkable coincidence, the company that haven't sent me either a turkey or some ridiculous gigaw, is the one that's tendered the lowest figure. Good. Perhaps there's a moral there. Yes. If you don't spend on bribes, your company's able to keep its prices down. Anyone I know? Oh, I shouldn't think so. Hardly a household name. But they've got a first-class reputation in the business. Woodward and Lynch. You're not worried about the unions? Huh. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Have you finished? Oh, damn. Who can that be? Hello, Bob. Happy New Year. Charles, what are you doing here? Let me in and I'll tell you. Come in. Hey, I hope it's not work. Now long the Labour movement for to get today made a national holiday. Well, you did tell me you were a 24-hour day man. No peace for the wicked, eh? It's Cheryl Potter. Oh, not her again. You haven't had her and her father on the phone to you this holiday. I have. Look, is this convenient? I mean... Oh, Sheila, you're all right. She's around as her mates. Sit down. Do you want to drink or anything? No, thanks. Go on. The poor girl's very upset. She and her father want Jerry Dwyer disciplined. Mr Potter's even talking about bringing in the police. The police? I'm treating this seriously. Yes, I know you are. Go on, what you been saying now? Four packs of smoked salmon. A whole roast pheasant in burgundy wine jelly. Well, didn't he say who he was? Just special delivery for Mr Collins. Look at these. Smoked oysters. There's no card, nothing. 
This looks like a last-ditch attempt by someone like David Davis. Do you realize how much these things must have cost? Well, I wouldn't put it past a character like him to have enclosed a wad of used five-pound notes hey, with all just this. a moment. Any message? Sorry about the delay. Thanks for all your help this year and the season's greetings. Woodward and Lynch. <laughs> oh, would you credit it? The only firm. Don't worry, Paul. I'll be your witness. You chose that firm without any financial or other inducements. <laughs> well, this really is the limit. A bottle of sherry, yes. With a plastic pen tray, but what on earth are we going to do with all this lot? Might I make a suggestion? Put it in my freezer? <laughs> well, does seem a shame to send it all back. <laughs> <laughs> and I agree with Cheryl, Bob. Dwyer should be disciplined. But you know the attitude of the lads. I know that this business was condoned by each and every one of the men on that shop floor. Look, even if she does get her own way, her name's gonna stink. Well, it shouldn't. She's done exactly what she should have done. And she's very upset. Upset? She will be upset when she starts getting victimised. Victimised? Janet, love, I've seen it all before, and over far less. For God's sake, this was just a bit of a lark, wasn't it? You know the time of year, just before the Christmas break? They're all in high spirits, the lads have had a few drinks and that. Bob, I'm going there tomorrow to see if I can press for Dwyer to be disciplined. Well, you know the mood of the men. We already face a work to do when they go back tomorrow. Look, this has got the lads really upset. There could be real trouble. But it's an important principle. Is it? Yes, it is. Well, this could end up with a long strike, you know. Now, you mightn't have seen that, but I have. <sighs> I thought you backed me. In a way, I do. It's just that I don't think this is the source of sexual harassment you were brought in to fight. Oh, yes, it is. And I'm going ahead. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. Yes, I do. Happy New Year. Shop for you too, love. Anything will do me, Ked. I'm sure you don't mind going to the shops, because I don't. No, you're all right. Just thought Karen or Damon could have gone. Oh. Or even our buddy. If they were ever home. Yeah, but when they are home, don't you go running after them. And if they want anything to eat, they could do it themselves. I'm not going to do a tap, love. You should think not. Hey, and don't you go killing yourself either. You've got a lot on at the minute. You shouldn't be having to do this. Ah, yeah, you're all right. I don't mind you starving. I'm not going to go hungry. <laughs> and hey, no matter how busy I am, I'm not complaining. Things are a lot better than last Christmas, aren't they? <laughs> are they? Don't you think so? Even with him. I just wish he'd make an appearance. No more donkeys, love. I'm past the stage for practical jokes. I only wish I had the time. See ya. See ya, love. <sighs> are you going to be all right in a taxi? Yeah, I'll be all right. I'll see you later. Ta see ya. Sure. Well, you're a great comfort, aren't you? 
Fancy not going with him to the hospital. After all he's been through. He didn't want me to go. Why was that, I wonder? I don't know. Is she coming again? If you mean Bessie, yeah, and Rick Saxton, the reporter. It's every day now. It's got to be, Michelle. And he'll want you here and all he'll want to talk to you. Me? What for? Because he will. I see you haven't even signed the petition. I signed the other one. That was the old one. This is a new campaign, in case you're interested. Will you stop going on at me if I sign? Sign it next to Terry. At least he had the decency. Will you? What? If I sign it, will you leave me alone? Just sign it, Michelle. You've got a lot more to do yet. A lot more. Come on, get up. Harold. It's out to the world, and there he is. I don't want your stupid jokes. He's upset. Upset? He's so upset, he's out boozing and enjoying himself night after night. Well, what's wrong with him having a drink with friends? It's like horse racing. It gets a grip on you. That's what. You're just peeved because he didn't ask you. I've got better things to do. My life's in order. Kevin wanted him to stay. He rang up last night. Mm. I bet you didn't tell him he was out boozing. Again. That's nothing to do with it. Isn't it? No, it's not. Well, I want to know how Ralph Hardwick can keep you out of betting shops if he's out forever gallivanting. Shut up! Right, I'll go and tell him. Come on, you, let's be having you. Come on. He's not there. Mrs. Clinton, it's you. <sighs> yes. Have you checked the bathroom? He spends enough time in there. Harry, his bed hasn't been slept in. Well, anything could have happened. I know. With a bit of luck. What? I said, is the phone off the hook? It's just ringing. Then he's not in, is he? Then where is he? Thank goodness you're home. I'm all right, Edna, love. You? You're all right, you. But what about us? It's not a flaming hotel. Hotel? That's right. You're living here for the time being. Harry, can't you see he's not himself? I don't care. I'm going to tell him. This is not a dust house where you can come and go when you feel like, you know. So what is this? I've been worried sick. I was going to call the police. Where have you been? Home. I, I've been on the phone twice. It kept ringing and ringing. Home. Oh, my. Wait till I report this to Captain. He won't believe these fairy tales and fibs about you being home. Harry! He's supposed to be looking after you. Because I'm not capable. And what does he do? He stays out all night. I was home. I had to go, Edna, love. Well, as long as you're all right. I've got some of that soup with pearl barley in it. I'm sorry if I worried you, Harry. You didn't worry me one little bit. It's her that's in the flat spin about it. It was going to the railway club. Everyone singing, having a good time, just like it always is. But no grace. We never missed the club, Christmas or New Year. Except once or twice when Grace wasn't up to it. I used to go for a few pints when I could get away. But I'd never stay long. Do you know, I even took her a bottle of Mackey's back home last night. Sort of habit, I suppose. I couldn't stop myself going back. I just sat there all night. Remembering the times we had. Other, other Christmases, you know. I wanted it to be the same. But it can't be, can it? Not when one of you is gone. It never can. I'm, I'm sorry, Harry. I couldn't help it. 
You've got soup ready, woman. I'll go and see. Don't say any more if you don't want to, lad. Thanks, mate. thought you might have popped over last night for a drink. I'm sorry, I did accept to Paul, but to work. You haven't any visitors? No. I saw your car, so I knew you were off. I want to ask you a favour. Off? Well, that's the understatement of the year. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I'm about due a break. Well, look, if you're particularly busy... No, you're going to ask me a favour. Come sit down. Oh, I feel a bit silly under the circumstances. I... I was going to ask you, would you like to go jogging with me this afternoon? Annabelle, I'm sorry. I will go jogging with you. Certainly I will. But for the next week, with this job I have on at the moment, I won't be able to join you. Fairly busy myself. So perhaps I'd better wait. Why don't you go out alone? You learn and then you can show me the ropes. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yes, he's for Sheila. A lady who works for my dad makes them. Paddy bears, he calls them. Poor Sheila. Don't envy her just now. I think I'll just nip across with this now. I expected him to be belated, but apparently everyone's still on standby. Some other time for the jogging then, Annabelle. Really, I don't think I should be able to find the time. Heather, can you hang on a sec? She started a new campaign for George. I signed last night. Oh, I see. We've started a new campaign to clear George's name, and you weren't in last night, so... You want me to sign? Yeah, please, love. Just here? Yeah. Hey, there's going to be thousands signed in there, just you see. There you go. Oh, thanks, love. Hope it all goes well. Cheers. Hey, are you all ready for this report, Bella? Our John's coming round. He wants to help. See what I mean? People are getting interested. Oh, I've done enough travelling in my time. I don't want to go. I'm not just thinking about you, but Edna's getting no younger. And going out this weather doesn't do her any good. Wouldn't you like your own personal chauffeur, Edna? And you'd look after it? Pay for it? I'm thinking about making our life easier with a car. Think of Edna and her legs. What about the petrol and all that? It's all money, you know. Not if you've got one of these little Japanese jobs. 50 miles to the gallon on a straight run. There's an advertisement here. Free road tax, all the extras, cash discount. Japanese? Well, the Czechoslovakian motors, then. They're half the price of ours, and good runners, so they say. I oh, own a car built by communists. I don't want no fodden rubbish outside my house. We've got a garage. Look at that over there. Last winter, I spent practically every morning trying to get that French shepherd of hers going. It never works properly. Well, the ties then, they make some good ones. Listen, when I get that car, it's going to be British. Built in England, right? Well, you best start looking then, Harry, eh? Three pounds, twenty-five and a half p. Is that all? Well, it's only from this morning, Marie, and we're doing smashing on the petitions. Have you seen this, Michelle? What? People will give their names, but not the money. Three rotten pounds for the leaflet fund. Yeah, well, it's after Christmas now, isn't it? Everybody's broke. Not everybody. It's a start, though, Marie, and, I mean, it's publicity we want, not leaflets. We'll just have to think of some other way. That'll be the report. I'll let him in, Michelle. Now, remember what I've told you. We've got all the dates and stuff and everything down here. So we've got to add everything we can think of, right? Uh, I've come to see me, ma'am. Oh, it's only our job. Come in, love. <laughs> all right. I might sit in the twins to meet Maureen. It's all right, Marie. She's training to be a nursery nurse. She'd have to be going out with her, Mike. <laughs> have you told Marie? No, love. It's your idea. You tell her, hey. Listen to this. We've got this band. It's a very good band and all. They've played some jigs already. Gigs? Yeah, they've played these jigs. Jigs are Irish. How many times? Anyway, 
I've done a few songs for the bands. I've started one about George. Carl, go away. I say Carl, though. I haven't decided that yet. What do you think about that, then, Marie? It's a good idea, isn't it? A special campaign song. We'll play it every gig we do, and wherever you want us to play it, Marie. Oh, thanks, love. Really gonna put the boots in on the busies and the judge and everything? You might even get it banned by Radio 1 and sell a million. He is trying to help George, you know. Do you want a cup of tea, love? What's that? Michelle. Can't he make it himself? Michelle? That'll be the reporter so now. I'll let him in. Come in, Rick, love. Cheers, Marie. Oh, it's full house here, isn't it? Campaign headquarters. That's right. From now on, you can come here any time you want. Well, that depends on what you've got for me, doesn't it? Uh, well, for a kick-off, you can have a cup of tea. Oh, I'd sooner have coffee. Michelle? Hello, Anna. What are you doing home at this time? Golf? You freeze. All in the course of duty. Woodward and Lynch want to discuss the finer points of the maintenance contract. Sounds like a 19th hole job to me. Can't understand anyone wanting to play golf in January. Well, Lynch is a golf fanatic, a new convert to the game. His partner says he's dreadful. Rather you than me. Yes. Now, if Lynch is so bad, he should find it easy to lose on diplomatic grounds. I have a good mind to play like a halfwit and really put him through it. Must get changed. Talking of diplomacy, could you have a word with your son? Oh, yes. He wants me to renege on a dinner party I'm catering for on Saturday evening. It's for the parents of a friend of his. Uh, you know, the boy from the computer club. Clinton. His father's a lawyer, isn't he? Gordon says I'm demeaning myself by cooking for them. Well, I should think so, too. It's a very profitable dinner for 12. Well, it's hardly the thing to do. Think of the leg pulling he'll suffer. Leg pulling? It's purely a business matter. Look, will you speak to him? Oh, no, Hannah, I agree with him. Well, I mean, if my mother did the same to me, well... I... No, no, I, I agree with Gordon. Well, it lowers our status. I should think carefully before undertaking a job like that. A mustache. Well, I'm going to do it. Do you hear? Peter, uh, he's the bass player, isn't he? He's unemployed too. Uh, yeah. Have you got a copy of the lyrics? I might be able to use them in the piece. Uh, no, well, I've not worked it out properly yet. I was going to ask Marie for some of George's jail letters. I thought I might use them a bit. And you've said okay to that, have you, Marie? Uh, yeah. Well, if John thinks he can use them. She thought there might be some good bits and pieces in the letters that John could work on. Yeah, like moaning about the mashed potato. Michelle. Your turn. Excuse me, Rickloff. Come in, love. How are you? Great. I feel dead light. Like one of them men on the moon. Did it hurt getting it off? Not really, no. Uh, this is Terry, Michelle's fella. He's had an accident and just been to have his plaster off. You all right, Terry? This accident wouldn't have anything to do with two fellas getting beaten up by McArdle, would it? No. I do talk to Detective Sergeant Johnson, you know, from time to time. Yeah, well, I don't talk to busies or reporters at any time. It may help, though, the campaign. We won't name names in that. Get lost. Um, I'd sooner keep Terry out of this, if you don't mind, love. He's had a bad time. It could go a long way to getting people on George's side. On your side, you mean? It'll only take five minutes. Oh, yeah, I talked to you for five minutes. My name's crap forevermore. It might help George. Not in you right, Lope, George. I'm sorry, Marie, I'm not talking to him. Come on, Michelle, we're going out. What? Anywhere, I don't care. Talk to the newspapers. Does he want me back in plaster again? <sighs> George will be out soon. I'm sick of it. How about going to Shrewsbury? What? Are your aunties? Yeah, well, you like it. She sent me a note this morning saying uh, that we could go and stay with her till I'm fit. Yeah, but Shrewsbury in January. It's not exactly Mallorca, is it? Well, it's an offer, isn't it? And we're sick of staying here, aren't we? Hmm, I suppose we both need a break. <sighs> a break? I've had enough of them. Both of us together. After all this... 
We're getting on each other's nerves and that. Have another go at it, then. All right. I'll just nip over and see Mrs Grant. I haven't had any news on the baby. He might be there. We went out earlier on and saw him. Come on. No, you can still go on your own. All right. Look, I've got things to do. You go over and don't be too long. All right. Oh, I've been phoning all over Europe. I thought you were in Belfast till the weekend. I had to come home. It was a rush job. Flew back New Year's Day. Uh, I phoned here till nine, but I got called in myself. Knew you were back. One of your dad's staff said you'd caught the plane. Yeah, I was in office meeting until ten o'clock. That was my New Year. <laughs> Talking of which, Happy New Year and a belated Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, get your coat on. What? We're going out. I've booked dinner in Chester. But before that, it's shopping for your Christmas present. Checkbook's all ready. Oh, God. You're not working. Yeah, I'm working from home. Right. Take the phone off the hook and let's play truant. I can't do that. You see that lot there? Once it's been checked through, it's got to go back today. And there's a meeting in the office tonight. You could have done it earlier. I've been at it all day, and yesterday. I phoned you twice, just an hour ago. Yeah, I went to see a neighbour. Well, if you can do that. Who's about to go into hospital, doctor? Sorry. When, then? I don't know. It could be a week before all this is finished. Well, with a bit of luck, you might get your Christmas present in time for your birthday. <laughs> It won't be that long. Come on. Don't be too disappointed. No. I'll phone you late on tonight? Yeah, please. But he wants £21 for just a thousand. Well, we need a lot more than that. We had thought of having a collection for the money, but. That prince wants to teach him a lesson. Fat capitalist. We ought to start a boycott on him till he comes up with the stuff for me. Well, I wish you'd told me. Why? Cut the newspaper, print it. No, not that sort of stuff. But my brother's a printer. He'd do, you say, 5,000 free. You better add to him. I've just picked up a nice, juicy job for him in advertising from a contact of mine. Hey, Woody. Are you sure? Yeah, I can fix that. You might say that that gave me a sort of exclusive right to the story, mightn't you? We're in your hands for the publicity. Good. I could rough something out for you, if you like, to go on the leaflets. I still don't think we should let that printing bloke get away with it. John, she'll do it. Hooray, have you seen that woman's own, the one with the front cover ripped off? Hey, we're talking here. Well, I'm sure it was in here. And uh, when, uh, when would it be ready, right, then? Oh, less than a week. I'll let you know tomorrow, shall I? Oh, here it is. Michelle, watch what you're doing, will you? I'll do the words for the leaflet as well and drop a coffee off. It won't say much. Just enough to catch interest. Bo, it's about the holiday flats. Yeah, there'll just be the two of us. Yeah, great. Will you knock that off? I'm trying to make a call. Hello, Sheila. Still here, then? If it's not a rude question, love, what are you doing here? Um, I thought I'd catch Bob. Is he in? I've something to discuss with him. Well, it sounds as if you're in luck, love. Here, I'll give you a hand. What's up with you? Have you just done what I think you've done? For this weekend? This weekend? Yeah? Just when George's campaign's starting to take off. Oh, it is, love. We're going to be very busy. Yeah. Well, I'm taking off. We're taking off. For Malta on Saturday. Malta? You phoned me back here to talk about this? About putting extra pressure on management because they won't sack a fella for trying to kiss a girl. 
Actually, I thought you were supposed to be at work. Have you never heard of maternity leave? Because fellas get it now, you know. I just happen to be taking three hours of mine a bit early. Bob, we need to push, or this man will get away with it. Look, we've already got a work to do on our hands. You push any hard and we better strike. Now, I spent all day down there yesterday trying to talk them out of it, and they're coming up with all sorts of complaints, things that have been simmering for years. I happen to be up to there with disputes, and some of them really important and serious, like uh, fellas losing their job redundancies, you know, them little unimportant things. And on top of that, I've got my wife there long overdue for having their baby. That's just the sort of attitude I thought you'd take. Hey, steady on, love. You're talking about me here. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I meant Bobby's saying there's more important things. That's all I get, time after time. There's more important things going on. Well, I think there is. I've got problems everywhere I look. What about this maintenance contract thing at Petsuk, M.A.? Haven't you heard, then? Heard what? The contract was announced last night. No. Who got it? A firm called Woodward and Lynch. Well, why haven't I been told? Oh, you weren't at the office. And do you know why I wasn't at the office? Because I spent all day yesterday with Cheryl Potter trying to keep the lid on their stupid stories about sex maniacs. That's why. That's what I want to talk about. Well, I don't. This is important. If Petsukem and Paul Collins have took on a couple of shysters, the fight starts now. There's more than 100 jobs on the line there. <laughs> In my pen, Anna. The one I got for Christmas. You had it in here last night. I know I did. That's why I'm looking for it in here. On the floor? Oh, here it is. Oh, what are these doing in here? Oh, sorry. I want to see to them tonight. I want to check them against last year's Christmas list. Well, time they went. Christmas is over, thank goodness. Oh, don't say that. Well, it's nice to have a few days' holiday, but I'm always glad to be back. Perhaps we can get back to our home routine now you've finished all that catering. It isn't finished yet, Paul. Well, don't forget I've invited the Hutchisons for tomorrow night. You remember me telling you about Malcolm Hutchison, don't you? Can't say I do. Joined the company just before I went back. On his way up, what's the kind of chap to keep well in with? Oh, really, Paul? Well, she better do us a good spread after all the practice you've had recently. A bit like a busman's holiday, won't it? Well, I think it's important that we entertain the right people. You will do me proud, won't you? It could be very helpful. I do have other things to do, you know. <sighs> Such as helping Marie Jackson. That ridiculous campaign, I suppose. I have been collecting signatures, yes. The petition's going quite well. Most people are sympathetic. Well, if you're so keen on campaigning, I should get up a petition for me. Whatever for? My shirt. That's imprisoned, isn't it? Went out on George Jackson's back. 
Heaven knows when I'll see that again. There's a good cause for you, Anna. Free the Paul Collins shirt campaign. Morning, Mum. Don't say it, love. What? Are you still here? I was going to ask, is there anything in there? Oh. <laughs> Should know you better by now, shouldn't I? Well, don't just stand there. Go and get a cup. Don't know who waits on you down there, but I'm in no condition. Oh, I. You're up early, aren't you? Yeah, well. Things to do, people to see. Last chance. Got to be off tomorrow. I know. Otherwise, there might be no job. What's this, Mum? It's Dad's phone number. And a breakdown of his movements through the day. Just in case. I've been hanging round, hoping I might get to say hello to, you know. Welcome to the world. Well, something like that. What will have to be today, Mum? I'm sorry I wasn't ready. <laughs> that's all right. It's not me that's catching a train. I don't suppose all the bargains will have gone just because I'm ten minutes late. Oh, Michelle's got a lovely pair of shoes in the sale. It's going to be the first time I haven't been in years. You don't have to buy. You can go and look around. I haven't the horse. You get so you don't want to go out. You must keep going. It's what George would want. I shan't let him know. That's the thing I dread about going visiting, having to smile when I feel miserable. Now, flask, sandwiches, paper tissues. Do I need anything else? Something to read on the train? Two trains and a bus. It's almost in the Lake District. It's not very convenient for you. More open, they said. More suitable. He didn't want her. He wanted to feel near home. I'm a bit bothered about how he's going to take her. He's been that up and down. All the better for seeing you. Timetable? Where's me timetable? Isn't this it? Yeah. Half past ten from Lime Street. Are we all right? Yes, there's plenty of time. I've allowed plenty of time. Now, flask, sandwiches, paper tissues. Look, Have I got everything? It's all still there. Are you taking something to read? Oh, no, I can't read. I can't settle. My thoughts just scurry round. Come on, then. You'll feel better once you've started. It's the furthest I've ever been without George. Oh. Work our way through another pile, shall we? Ten down, and how many more to go? As much again. We should break the back of it today. Particularly with the speed you work. Ooh, you're not so bad yourself. <laughs> They're my books. I know my way around them. I should do. I've been with Cosgroves long enough. Man and boy. What? It's just a saying the old gardener at my parents' hotel uses. I've tended these plants, man and boy. When I was little, I could never figure out what he meant. Did he grow boys? <laughs> I used to want to go and ask him if he'd grow me a little brother. Under the gooseberry bushes? <laughs> yeah, and then I found out it wasn't quite like that. You're good at finding out things. You did a good job in Birmingham finding out about that office block. Saved me from making a fool of myself. That was just luck. No such thing. In our business, luck's like genius. 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. Perspiration? <laughs> yes, better get on with it. More? Damon, get up. My mum isn't there. Are oh, you still there? Oh, Karen. I thought I told you yesterday. I know. You were sick of people saying that, but I really thought you weren't here. I can go for a walk, can't I? Well, yeah, but it's winter. I know it's winter. It's not that cold. I don't live at the North Pole. All right. 
Oh, I'm sorry, love. I'm a bit narky. I just feel... I can't settle. I was going to do these spuds for dinner. I'll do them. I'll do the dinner. Oh, will you, love? That'd be a great help. Some mm -hmm. cold meat in the fridge. And you'd never sit down, eh? <sighs> I can't settle. You don't think... You know what they say when they launch a rocket, don't you? All systems go and counting. Counting? Do you mean the pains? Yeah. Ten minutes and then ten minutes again. Shouldn't we do something? Ring me dad or go to the hospital? No, love, it'll be hours yet. They've got to get a lot harder and faster than this. We don't want to make another mistake, do we? No, we don't leave her too late either. Stop worrying. I'm an old hand at this, remember? Who's still here? Oh, Damon. Damon. Ah, there you are. <clears throat> Sorry to keep you waiting. It's all right. I believe you want to chat, don't you? Yes, I'd like to fill you in on this maintenance contract. Put the unions clearly in the picture. You know it's been awarded, don't you? Well, I have to, you? Yes, I've given it to Woodward and Lynch. They put up a very competitive price and promised a very good job. Oh, I got you on. What do you mean? Competitive price? Well, good job. You can't have both, can you? Oh, can if a firm's run efficiently. Look, it takes time to do a job properly, doesn't it? In time, a working man's time's got to be paid for at a decent rate. I don't mind paying for working time, time on the job. It's waiting time I'm trying to save on. Waiting for a mate, waiting for a part, prolonged tea breaks. <laughs> if Woodward and Lynch are half as efficient as they promised to be, they could cut out all that sort of wastage. What, by cutting the tea breaks and pushing the lads? Oh, they're an old established firm. I'm sure they do no such thing. Well, you get a big bill for loads of extras then, won't you? Look what happens when they privatise the hospital laundries. We're not here to discuss the merits or demerits of private enterprise or the merits of subcontractors. The choice of them is in the sphere of management. I called you here to explain what they'll undertake and how it will affect your members. OK, you better tell me the score. I'll have to report back to my committee. Get rid of that for me, will you? Oh, Mum, it's only a bit of holly. I know, but it should have been gone by now. On Twelfth Night, it's bad luck to keep it any longer. It'll be all right, Mum. Is it time? It's mm. the holly. What? Left over from Christmas. I thought I'd cleared everywhere out. The house has never been so clean. Have you finished that vacuum? It's getting the nest ready, Damon. That's why we keep cleaning up. Look, I clean every day, you know, baby or no baby. It's just that... Normally, you don't notice. Look, shall we phone me dad? Or that Mrs Johnson, the midwife? It's just having a practice, that's all. Yeah, well, one of them's got to be the real thing. Oh, that's true, love. I'm not going to walk around like this forever. <sighs> Look, I still think we should phone. Oh, Karen, stop nagging. Mum knows. Just cos you're a girl, you think you know it all. Should we knock another one down before lunch? All right. But then I know a very nice restaurant. Oh, lovely. We'll treat ourselves. A reward for a job well done. Yes. Don't often see stock control done like this these days. Uh, some of the staff have been around a long time. They like their own way of doing things. And of course, whilst Cosgroves was a family firm, that's been acceptable. As a matter of fact, there's been some anxiety amongst the staff about this merger. The jobs are guaranteed. I thought that was one of the conditions. Mm, bound to be some shake-up, though. New ways of doing things. Well, some of the procedures could do with tightening up. There have been changes over the last few years. Perhaps a shake-up will do us good. I suppose I've got a bit set in my ways. It is this job hasn't stretched me for a year or two. Why didn't you move on, then? <laughs> Personal reasons. Children's schooling. Wife's parents. Oh, maybe I'm not as ambitious as you are. It's nice to see a contented man in our field of work. It's very rare, too. I suppose so. All I ask is another five years in the niche I'm in now. Time to see the children settled, mortgage paid off. Not too much to ask, is it? 
I hope not. So you say there'll be no redundancies at all? You have my word for it. Just natural wastage. That's right. You know what that means, though, don't you? No layoffs. Yeah. No new jobs, either. The unemployment situation isn't my responsibility. Running a viable firm is. All in the name of profit, eh? What's wrong with profit? How will it help your members if the firm goes out of business? Oh, come on. We're not talking about that sort of money. Not in this plant. When it comes to the balance sheet, we're part of the main firm. If we can be profitable, it helps them. Are you, um... It's always been a matter of pride with me to run a viable firm. The phone, uh... Oh, yes, I've got. I left this number, you know. Yes. Yes, Paul Collins. Yes, yes, he's here. You're right. Thank you. Hello. How are you, kid? OK, look, I'm on my way now, yeah. It'll take a little while, though. I don't know, love. About, about half an hour. OK, well, yeah. Well, if you do, just ring for an ambulance, OK? OK, take care, love. The baby? She thinks so, yeah. I'm sorry, I'll have to leave. Well, of course you must. We'll talk about this some other time. Yeah, fine. I'd, uh, I'd like to wish you... Uh... No doubt we'll hear. Yeah, just hope she hasn't left it too late. Yes, well. All the very best. Yeah. Thanks. Is it your dad? Uh, it's up, Mrs. Johnson. Oh, he's taking his time. Ah, looks like the real thing this time. <laughs> well, I hope so. Have you called the ambulance? No, my husband's coming. He's on his way. I want her to phone a cab, but she wants her to wait. He'll be here in a minute. Well, uh, before we leave for the hospital, let's you and me pop upstairs for a minute, and I can see how things are. Good one, is it? Just let it go. Try and pant. Shall I put the kettle on? If you want. You look as though a cup of tea might help. What's that mean for me, Mum? No, she won't have time for it by the look of things. Eh. Uh, don't forget your bag. Hold on for it, Mum. She won't want it now. When we go. All right? Is it all right? Don't worry, we haven't lost a brother or a sister yet. Eh? Brother or sister? It's really happening. It's a haven. It's been happening for months. Well, yeah, but it didn't seem real then, did it? I mean, knowing's one thing, seeing's another. Did you see her face on that last one? Did she look like it really hurt her? I don't like seeing her like that. Do you think it does hurt? Well, they say so. I asked her a while ago. What did she say? Well, she just said it was worth it. Any news yet? Uh, no, well, it wasn't one of our out, no. Well, babies make up their own minds about when to come, don't they? Uh, not that you'd know anything about that. Er, uh, no. January sales. Uh, have you got any bargains? Well, actually, I think I've been rather silly. I've bought a tracksuit, uh, half price. Thinking of joining the England squad? Sorry? Er, uh, you know, football. Oh, no, no, nothing like that. I'm trying to counteract the effects of Christmas eating. Actually, I thought I'd go jogging. <laughs> Did you? But, uh, you don't think I'm silly, do you? Eh, well, lots of people do it, don't they? <laughs> of course, Paul will probably make a joke about it, uh, like he did about the shirt. What shirt? Uh, he wants me to get up a petition, free his shirt from jail. Uh, he lent it to George Jackson. Right. <laughs> it's 
year. Why, who do you think it'll be Father Christmas? Is that the midwife's car outside? Do you mean it's... Yeah, it's on its way. Where is she? She wanted to wait for you. I got stuck in the traffic. Well, Mrs Johnson got in. I wanted to be here. I'll get off to the hospital. She's upstairs. Dad. What? See? Did she forget it? Why didn't you take it, son? You could have got a taxi. Dad! Dad! What? What? She's still here, I said. Leave the bag. She doesn't want it yet. She's upstairs at Mrs Johnson, the midwife. What, you mean she hasn't had the baby yet? No, they're just seeing how things are going. So I'm in time. You're in time. Thank goodness for that. Oh. Everything all right? Fine, Mr Grant. Everything's going according to plan. We don't have much time, The though. car's outside, love. Are you OK, she? Just get me there, love. I'd like the clapness. Oh. I'll be safe. Be the best little ride you've ever had. I know it, love. Oh. We should go. Yeah, come on. <laughs> right. Damon, fetch the bag, lad. Good luck, Mum. Thanks, love. Oh. You all right, Mum? Quite well dilated. I can't find the keys, love. Well, no one else has had them, Dad. Where's the car keys? We'll use my car then. Have you left them in the ignition? Oh, I might have done. Hang on. Hang on a minute, Queen. Wait for me. Hey! Dad! Bye, love. You won't be a baby around here much longer. Look after yourself, then. Right. I'll see some things there. I know you will, love. <laughs> they should have sorted the car out by now. Put them with other cushions, is not I? Let's go. As soon as you're ready, Mrs. Grant. Right. One of us out, and two of you back. God willing. I'll start the car. I'll help you, mother. Hey, Dad. Dad. Well, you'll make sure that we're the first to know, won't you? Go off, my lad. <laughs> Who else are you? <laughs> I think we'd better get back in. What's going on? She's not coming. I can see that. I'm sorry about this. Don't worry about that. Just worry about getting upstairs. Is there anything I can do? Put the kettle on. I have a feeling we'll be needing quite a number of cups of tea. Well, don't just stand there, Dave, and do something. What? Put that back down. I'm coming, she. I said she should have phoned you sooner. Yeah, but she didn't want to be a bother. Yeah, well, she's going to be more bother like this, isn't she, Damon? What can we do? Nothing we can do, is there? It's all up to my mum now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd better wash my hands. Where's the bathroom? Hey, out there on the left, love. <sighs> You're right, Crane. I'm sorry about this, love. Oh, don't be worrying about it, as long as you're all right. And the baby. Hey, look, I said, don't worry about that. You're the important one to me. Oh, God, help me run. Come on, love, hold oh. on. Oh, no, love, you can do them. Show them how to do it, babe. Come on. Come on. Oh, you're the best little mum in the world. And the best wife. Not to bad yourself. See what's going on. Shh. Can you hear something? Oh, what do you expect? Well, I just want to know what's going on, that's all. And don't you think I do? Hey, shut up, you two. God, she said she was going to get on with it today. Didn't think she meant it. I should never said nothing, now. Oh, it's not because of that. There's all these changes in your hormone level when the time's right. Been reading up about it, have we? As a matter of fact, I have. Hey, do you think it's safe to have her in the home? Well, babies have always been born in the home. Don't you know any history? No, I don't. I'm not the clever close round here, am I? Well, you could have been Dame and you just never tried. Can't you two just keep quiet? What a family. Hey, you know, people ask you, you know, about your family. Well, I always say I've got two brothers. It's going to be different now, isn't it? Yeah. 
two brothers and a sister. A sister and two brothers. We're having a lad. We're having a girl. Just so long as me mum's all right. <sighs> Nearly there. Good job we stayed. <sighs> yeah, she's doing fine, isn't she, Ness? <sighs> yes, fine. <sighs> Slowly now. Pants. Pants. <sighs> Let it come gently. <sighs> One more push, Mrs. Grant, and we'll have your baby here. Come on. Come on. Oh. Come on. Come on, babe. Oh. Trying to teach your granny to suck eggs with your son. Anyway, look, I've got enough on my plate without you sticking your over in. Yes, I have got a good reason for having a few days off work. Not that it's any of your business, lad. Oh, I will, yeah. But you leave the Jerry's wire business to me to sort out. I'll tell you why, because I'm the full-time union official, that's why. Yeah, and the same to you, too. Bloody cheeky pillock. things on my mind. I thought you might have popped over last night when you got back from prison. I did call round to see you, but... I stayed at Betty's with the kids. Is anything wrong? George has lost 28 days remission. You've got a visitor. Ah, Sheila, love. <laughs> Congratulations. Ah, I'm made up here, honestly. Really chill. Mm, thanks, love. So are we. <laughs> She's a little beauty, isn't she? And you look great. Ah, congratulations, both of you. Smash them. Come on, you two. Downstairs for a minute. All right. Don't go away. We'll be back soon. Little <laughs> sis. Oh. oh, come on, big bro. Make a cup of tea, will you, Karen? Kids are thrilled to bits. We can't keep them out of the room. Oh, you should have seen us last night when Damon come round with the good news. Over the moon. Made up. What time did you get out there, Ozzy? This morning. 
The speed they sent me out, I think they wanted the bed. <laughs> ah, she's a little beauty. Can I, she? Well, she's no teeth, love, so she won't bite you. Come on. Mm. That'll bring a few fond memories back, won't it, lad? Yeah. Aye. Some very fond memories, Bobby. Aye. Got Hello, baby. Baby Grant is your uncle Matty. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Teresa will be made up when she sees her. Where is Teresa? Oh, it wasn't safe for her to come round. She, she's had the flu. She said she'll be down as soon as it clears up. Oh, and she wants to know what time she was born. Hey, eh? What are you going to call her? How heavy was she? Three bags of sugar and a quarter of tea. You what? <laughs> Six pounds, four ounces. And she was born at 20 to 3. And we haven't decided on a name yet, lad. Oh, is there anything else I should know? I've got to get all the info, otherwise trees will throw a wobbler. Well, you can tell her the way things are going round here, she's going to get spoiled rot. I believe that. Are you at the birth, Bob? Like, Oof. Don't ask. Oh, take no notice of him. He was a great comfort to me. Ah, that's our Bobby. No old joking apart, Matty, lad. It's the most moving experience of my life. It's just a miracle, isn't it? A miracle? Well, in your case, it was a miracle, eh? A big, ugly lump like you, siding a beautiful little angel like this. <laughs> <laughs> Some fella said that Liverpool was full of lazy sods and villains, and... Well, it started a row, and... Things got out of hand, and... Well, anyway, it ended up with this fella hitting George. But if that fella hit George, well, why has George lost his remission? The other fella had a mate, didn't he? He swore to the governor it was George who started it. Two against one. It's not enough that he gets stitched up on the outside. You should have seen him. He's a wreck of a man. It's just not on that somebody as good as George can be treated like this. I am sorry. Yeah, well, sorry won't free my George. Well, I'm going to do something to upset them, the system, like they've upset us. Do you really think that's wise? Do you know what George said to me, Annabelle? A day in the life of a free man is only 24 hours. But a day in the life of a prisoner is an eternity. I'm not going to forget that in a hurry. And I am not going to rest until George is set free. Ooh! Very nice. I'll take you off if it's out. Are you all right, Tom? I can take the old presents up, thank you. Hey, how's the job going? Well, the good thing about this job is, Daddy, that you... Karen! How long is Uncle Matty going to be up there? Well, I don't know, do I? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, you see, the money's not too bad, Daddy. I mean, if you play the cards, right, you can maybe get... Dad, it's all right to go up now. Don't you stay long now. Your mother's tired. OK, see you, Uncle Matty. Nice to talk to you, son. Oh, she's gorgeous, <laughs> isn't she, Matt? Been like this ever since they come home. Never a dull moment, eh? You're joking, aren't you? How's the job going, Barry, lad? Hey, well, it's not too bad, man. Listen, do you want a cup of tea, son? Oh, no, better, Matt. I told Teresa I'd be home in an hour, lad. So how's it going work-wise, Bob? It isn't. Remember that young girl I told you about last week? Gonna practice jobbing. Go away. The union's number one military. Well done, man. No pitch for the district secretary, eh, Bobby? Yeah, the funny thing is, Matt, management only took the girl on as a token gesture to the lads. She's the first female fitter ever to work there. And now do you want to get... Well, half of them want to get shut of her. Mind you, I wouldn't mind seeing Dwyer booted out myself. Oh, no, no, you've changed your tune from last week, haven't you? Maybe I've been a bit short-sighted, today. Eh? You know, a stolen kiss and a few sexual remarks is nothing to him, but that young girl was disgusted. Oh, no, no, come on, Bobby, will you? No, it's no laughing matter, lad. It's not funny. Now, I've had time to think, haven't I? Especially about what our Karen said about the way women are treated in general. I mean, why should they be persecuted and touched up whether they're at work or out socialising? It's life, Bobby, isn't it? I know, but why should it be? Don't ask me, lad. I mean, I'd change it if I could. But remember, it was a that's life situation that got me made redundant, Bob. <laughs> See you, lad. See you, kid. She settled down now. Yeah, I thought she would after a feed. Hey. Come on, 
place at last. Not for long, no kid. Gonna have the whole day this afternoon, I'm afraid. Annabelle's already been over. <laughs> and Michelle and Edna. In fact, half of Brookside have been to see her. I've told them all to come back this afternoon, let you have a bit of a rest. Oh, well, that was very thoughtful of you, love. Well, you need it, don't you? Just coming out of the hospital with Karen and Dave and hovering around you and the baby all morning. <laughs> Novelty will wear off in a couple of days. Show him a dirty nappy, we won't see Damon for a month. <laughs> How do you feel? Like I've just had a baby. Can I tell you something, Shay? I was awful proud of you, you know. You know, just the way that you took everything in your stride and... Well, you know, the way things could have turned out. Thank God. Can I tell you something just between us? When our baby was given a clean bill of health, it just... I don't know, I just felt... Not like I've never felt before. I know what you mean, love. Hey, come on. Like you said before, it's over. The Hutchinsons will be here at eight. You invited them. You can't possibly go for a jog now and be back in time to prepare everything. I can, and I will. <sighs> Only be 20 minutes. Not jogging a marathon, you know. You're doing this on purpose, aren't you, to spite me? Doing what on purpose? Running away from your domestic responsibilities. Jogging away, you mean? Jogging is a waste of time and energy for a woman of your years. Better off doing something more suited to your talents. In the kitchen, you mean? If you like, for the moment, yes. You'd be better off, you mean? Can't you be reasonable? Right. Well, the dinner is set. We're ready and on the table at eight o'clock sharp. Annabelle, anything can happen to a woman jogging alone. You might fall over and hurt yourself, or, or worse still, be attacked by a raving lunatic. Twice in one night. I don't think that's very likely, do you? Evening. Evening. Out for a spin? Spin? Jogging. Uh, yes, uh, it's my first time. I feel a bit foolish. Oh, don't be. No. No, I admire people of, um, Shall I say over 21 exercising their bodies? Ladies in particular. Shows an independent spirit. Oh, thank you. I feel more confident. Can I offer you some advice? As a doctor? Yes. Don't jog too far or too fast to begin with. Have one goal in mind to reach your destination no matter how slowly. You'll find it will pay dividends. I'll remember that and uh, thank you for your advice. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. That's the key. Bye. Bye. Oh! A belated Happy New Year. Hello. Hi. Come on in. Are you, um, still working? What else? Oh, well. I finally got time to get you this. Merry Christmas. Oh, Stuart. You shouldn't have. Oh, isn't that beautiful? I didn't quite know what to get you. It was a toss-up between <laughs> that or a grass cutter. But I couldn't quite visualise you with a whopping great lawnmower dangling round your neck. Oh, Stuart, that's lovely. Will you put it on? Oh, yes. There you are. Oh. Now, let's see. Allow me to think I wanted to be a brain surgeon. <laughs> you got it? Yep. There. Done. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. 
Now, what's it to be? An evening out uh, with pink champagne, soft lights? I'm still working on the Cosgrove oh. report. I can't go out. All right. Would I, um, would I be in your way if I settled down to watch a spot of telly? With the sound low, of course. I was hoping you might say that. Well, say no more. Well, come along, young lady. Work. Don't let me stop you. Why don't you do some work? Like a cup of tea for me? You? Tea for two? Sounds like a good title for a song. Isn't that lovely? It's like Christmas all over again. <laughs> Teddy bear a feather. Mittens and booties are fed, eh? And that off an Abel. Are Karen and Damon actually volunteering to clean their bedrooms? Yeah. Barry with a job he seems to like. And our healthy little baby. I feel as if I'm in paradise, love. I know, and it shows, love. It really shows. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> An hour and ten minutes you've been out. You said you'd be back I in 20 know, minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, what happened? <gasps> Where did you job to, Lamb's End? Oh, I ran further than I intended. I had to walk back. Well, I, I ran the last hundred yards. I didn't like the look of the dog that was following me. Did you hail a taxi? In the woods. Don't be silly, Paul. I think it's you the one that's being silly, Anna. Or more cunning than I give you credit for. Here am I, slugging away in the kitchen like a navvy over soup and Lord knows what else, and you're out for an evening stroll. You've been against this dinner party from the word go, haven't you? Will you stop brandishing that ladle before you do me an injury? You really are a pain at times, you know that. Do you know, I think jogging agrees with me. I feel quite fit, even after just one, one run. Well, you look as though you've been bounced around the ring by giant haystacks. Now, will you get a move on? It's 7.40. The Hutchinsons are due here in 20 minutes. I think I've been using muscles I didn't even know I had. Well, now use them just one more time. Mount the stairs. Will you stop fussing? Oh, good. Oh, blast. It's them. The Hutchinsons are here now. What are we going to do? Oh. Eight o'clock. I did, damn it. Oh, I blame you for oh, this, Oh, yes, Anna. you would. Now, look, be quick. I'll make excuses for you. Hurry. Ah, oh, good evening. Oh, good Come evening. in, please. Oh, apologies for arriving early. Oh, that's all oh. right. <laughs> <laughs> Annabelle and I are always ready for the unexpected. Oh, oh good. <laughs> yes. News bulletins. I think I need a break. The based firm of Z Line, the company which makes agricultural machinery components, has announced almost 200 redundancies at its booking plant. The company claims that it has reduced demand for its product. Which what do you think? This will be served early next month. Meanwhile, a motion has been put before the next meeting of Stephanie's Council, calling on the company to think again. Z-Line reduced its workforce only like... Hey, I was watching that. No, you weren't. <sighs> You're fast asleep. I think that's all you come round here for, to fall asleep on my sofa. Not true, I swear. Finished? No, not yet. You look as though you need a shoulder to lean on. Pour out your troubles. That obvious, is it? Cosgroves? Yeah. They accept my report, which recommends staff cuts. It's probable that Jonathan McCabe, he's their regional financial director, will be replaced by a whiz kid from the takeover company. Why should this McCabe person worry you? Well, sentencing someone to the dole queue isn't exactly something I can take lightly. I know many a doctor who doesn't relish telling a patient he's got X amount of weeks or months to live, but they accept it. Part of their profession. Yeah, I'm talking about a man losing his job. You're talking about life and death, literally. A doctor must try and immunise himself against any personal feelings towards a patient, no matter how hard that may be, as you must do concerning McCabe. The problem is, I've already involved myself on a personal level. He's been really kind to me, helpful. 
I consider him a friend. Mm, well, now I understand your dilemma. So tell me, how does one tell a friend his services may no longer be required? Oh, yes, I've always been interested in astronomy. Mm, I'm sure it's a fascinating subject. Mm. Have you any enlightening thoughts on the universe, Annabelle? Oh, no. I prefer to keep my feet firmly on the ground. <laughs> well, if you've finished, I'll take your plates. Oh, thank, thank you. Of course, astronomy isn't my sole pastime, is it, Sarah? <laughs> no, Malcolm, you're a man of many hobbies. <laughs> Annabelle's just taken up a hobby which she may deeply regret later. Oh, what is it? Oh, I'm sure you would be interested. Well, it's, it's jogging, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that might amuse you. Well, jogging is our favourite means of relaxation. Really? Yes, Sarah and I love jogging together. We jog three or four times a week. Do you really? Do you accompany Annabelle, Paul? Well, I... Uh, no, Paul thinks jogging is silly. Now, now, to be fair, I never quite put it in those terms. So you uh, didn't see yourself donning shorts and tracksuits, Paul? Well, no. No, not really. Oh, but how are to those who do? Well, in fact, it was through jogging I met Sarah. She was jogging one way and I the other. But it wasn't too long before I decided to run her route. He was shy at first. <laughs> True, but uh, well, I divorced my wife a year or so later and... Uh, we tied the knot shortly afterwards. Yes, one thing about jogging, one never knows who one will meet round the next corner. Good God. Tell me, Malcolm, why did you begin jogging at such a late stage? Well, my first marriage was going through a very bad patch. And I needed to get out of the house to breathe fresh air. And I did. A very beautiful breath of fresh air. Oh, how romantic. <laughs> Pity you don't like jogging, Paul. Two pairs of feet are better than one. <laughs> well, I, I might give it serious thought. I'm sure Annabelle would welcome company. <laughs> anyway, to change the subject, about Petrochem, Malcolm. One moment, Paul. Now, tell me, Annabelle, how long have you been jogging? I mean, what stimulated you to jog? Where do you jog? Now, do tell us all about it. Mm. Well. Come on, Karen, give us a look. Well, don't push. Hey, A, A, you two. It's a job we don't have a new baby every day. Well, I tremble at the thought, love. Oh, Karen's right. She's going to sleep. Damon, get your big head out, lad. Just think, I was once like here, all little, soft and cuddly. Yeah, and you grew up big, soft and stupid. <laughs> oh, ha, ha. <laughs> look who's talking. You were so ugly when you were born. My mum wouldn't let you out in the streets till you were seven, cos your face scared all the kids. <laughs> Very funny, that, Damon. Isn't that right, Mum? No. She was nine, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you hear Harry Cross knock? Harry Cross, lad? Yeah, he was knocking on the door, went away shouting, and he said, if you don't keep the noise down, this phone will be busy. <laughs> Are you off now? Yeah. You all right, lad? Yeah, I'm sound, lad. Keep in touch, lad. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Uh, I hope everything works out OK for you, Paddy. Yeah, it's hard, eh? It will. <laughs> I'm glad you got a job you like. Thanks, Cam. Um, well, I'd just like to say, you know, uh, well, I'm glad everything's worked out all right for everyone. No need to say anything, is there? As long as you're happy and we're happy, that's all that matters, eh, lad? Yeah. Thanks, brother. I want a proper goodbye. Don't stay away too long. No. Won't be forever, will it, Mum? I so. Right, uh, I suppose I'd better get going. Look after yourself, everyone, all right? See you, buddy. See you, lad. I love you. Bye, love. Bye, Sounds like feeding time. Can I get it out, Mum? Give... Give over. Oh, hey. Never mind, that. He's gone, Ed. Tell you what, you get her out when I'm ready. Okay, I'm sorry. Can I do nothing then? Of course you can, lad. Get lost. I'll tell you what, ma'am. I'll feed her while you hold her, okay? <laughs> no offence, son. But I don't think you've got the right equipment. Oh, what do you mean? Seven is dead, good man. Oh, yeah. Hey. That fella out there can look after himself. It's this little one here that needs us now. <laughs> 